Hart backs up and tries it again. Yes! He does it again! Hart met by Thomas. Hart on the drive. Yes! And the foul! Here comes a step back three. Again! Down the hatch it goes for Jay Hart. Step back. Unstoppable shot in basketball. It's unbelievable. Hun, how do you like me now? James flexing those muscles. Oh, James Hunt with an MVP performance. <laughs> James Harden did not want the calendar to change in January because the December of 2018 was the best month of his career. He set an NBA record, eight straight games of at least 35 points and five or more assists. He tied the record with seven straight games and at least five threes, joining Michael Jordan and Kobe as the only dudes to score 400 plus in a 10 game span. Thursday night, 1030 Eastern TNT. It's a rematch of last year's Western Conference Finals. Rockets, Warriors from Oracle. First meeting winners, the Rockets got the dub. See what happens tonight. Out on the court, Kenny Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal joins us. No, it, it, you know what it is, right? Tell me what it is. It's those Q's versus those Kappas over here. Oh, it's the Q's versus those Kappas. Yeah. Okay, we're going to yeah. say that for another okay, show. Okay, okay. <laughs> next week, <laughs> we got to have a battle. Kenny ain't getting though. us hyped up. Yes. We got to get hyped up for the game, though. Looking at James Harden, the Terry's on. He seems to drop 40 points every single game. Eight straight is what we're looking at now. Number one, I saw this crazy stat that he has the most 40-point games scored with taking 12 shots or less. Now, that's, now, now think about that. Let that process for a second and answer oh, this question. Okay, okay. But you're taking more than 12 shots, though, because you're getting fouled. So you're, you're getting fouled on those attempts, So it's meaning he's getting 20-plus free throws per night. So he's probably taking another 10, 12 shots, and, but he's really getting – only credited for 12 because if you get fouled, it's not a shot. But he's still getting aggressive movements to the basket. And he, he does something I, I don't understand what other guards don't do. Put your hand out, Kenny. Once he drives by you, as soon as you put your hand out right there, yeah, and he you goes have to call it. You have to call it. So he's going to the line 15. And the strength allows him to get through mm -hmm. the contact. His strength, his upper body strength. So looking at James Hart with no disrespect to any of the greats, Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, what have you, is he the most Unique oh, okay. offensive player. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for that question. I just want to make sure I put the question <laughs> out of the greats. Is, first is he the most all, unique first, offensive player we've first, ever seen? First of all, don't put them guards over here with us. You keep the guards over here. <laughs> you said Wilt and Kareem? Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't, don't do that. We're just talking about offensive productivity. We ain't talking about none of that. The guards well, take the guard, big guy. However, he is a very difficult player to guard. Uh, can handle the ball, can shoot the three, can drive, get to the line, get fouls. Very difficult. I wouldn't say he's the most unique, but he's probably one of the one of the you know top guys to guard in the league. He, he is the most unique in this era, you know, because of the, the, the ability to take as many threes as he uh, is able to in this era, the way the game is constructed. Yes, he is the most unique basketball player because most guys can't get to the line who can shoot the ball that well from the outside like him. But overall, no, the most unique player Wore number 23, and, and, and you got his sneakers on. So No question about oh, that. What? Unique at that position. Oh, okay, the guard. Okay, yeah. the guard. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, no, 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 you were the most unique okay, big man. Uh, no all question. Right, okay, all right, okay. So, 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 unique. All right, so, so, so moving forward. Because his speed and quickness at his size was most unique. I would say that. No question about Thank it. You. So, James Harden, we, know, we saw what happened last season against the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. He put up big numbers at the beginning and then started to taper off towards the end. What's going to happen tonight in Golden State? Is he going to be able to put another one of these 40-point performances on again? Without question. He's going to get 40 tonight because this, you're going to play a game that's going to allow you to get multiple opportunities with the basketball. They're not going to slow the game down. So you play against the Golden State. When, I, when you used to play against teams like this, when I, at least for me, you know, Jack would get 25 shots every night. But if I would see Golden State or Houston as a point guard, I go back in my era, I go, man, this is the first time I'm going to get 17 shots and no one's going to yell at me because there's so many possessions mm. going up and down. So I was excited to play. So James Harden, who already gets 25 shots, oh, he, he's, this is a 40-point night without – I have to agree with Kenny. It's still early in the season. Uh, he definitely will get 30, 40 points. The problem with James Harden is he does so much during the regular season. You just have to hope and wonder that he doesn't get tired. Take it from me. Scoring 40 points tonight is very, very tiresome on your body. And I think that's what happened to him last year. Chuck said it a few times. Wow. I, I didn't believe him, but he said James is wore out. And his numbers showed. 
Speaking of numbers, let's go to the early returns on the Eastern Conference ballot. I want to take a look at these players that have been selected so far. Well, not selected, but the ones that have the highest votes in the front court. Looking at those names, you see Giannis, you see Kawhi. I like Kawhi. that. I like it that it seems like everything is Vince Carter! Oh, well, I see you, big Vince. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, big Vince. Hey, Vince, you had so, 21 the other night. Oh, you know what Vince is? What's that? Oh, make it fight, fight. Oh, he Omega. is there. Omega's Omega getting all the love. Omega's oh, getting all the love. Yeah. Uh, any, any, any coppers on that? No, but I don't know. Not. That, that, we'll go there. That's not okay. that they go to class long enough to do anything. <laughs> Most Looking of at the Eastern guards. Long Kyrie Irving, but there's a surprise right there. D-Wade the taking flush. the last Man, that, Yeah, that, that, that's surprising, Ooh, but that's the last dance. I, I think that, wow. If you look at that list, though, you know, obviously D-Wade has an all-star numbers. Uh, but, you know, Ben Simmons probably be the only one who could say argue. Uh, you know what? That should be my spot. You know, Kyrie. Oladipo? Uh, I think. Uh, it's still early, though. No, nah, yeah, Oladipo because early. of the injuries. Injuries, missed a yeah, lot of games. He can't say that should be my spot. We know your thoughts on Zach Levine. Good numbers, but not necessarily in a winning program. Not yet. Chicago. We got to see if he's a looter in a lot riot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if he, you know, where you're able to get a lot of points because of don't the circumstances. That. Don't start that. We don't know that yet. We got to see that. him on a good team. But you know what we do know? It's time for Diesel Dunks. That's what we're here for. It's showtime on a Thursday. Big fellas, take it away. Before we get started, in the words of Faison Love to Martin Lawrence, don't hit it with that muddy green. No! <laughs> <laughs> Turn after the trade that shook up the world this past offseason. And uncharted waters for the Spurs. No pieces from their last title team. However, DeMar DeRozan has been a welcome addition. Leads the Spurs in scoring and assists. San Antonio is in contention for a playoff spot in the West. And there you see Oracle. Two teams that went seven games last season in the Western Conference Finals meet again tonight for the second time. Houston blew the doors off the Warriors the first time earlier this season. Now the Hot Rockets look to do the same tonight, led by their reigning MVP. Speaking of reigning MVP, you do not see him on the screen. The early returns for All-Star Weekend are in. The first ballots made by the fans, and as you see, LeBron is in the lead with a number of others, but no James Harden. Nevertheless, you're rocking with the best. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us. We appreciate that. Roe Parrish, Kenny the Jet Smith, Game Time Live. We're going to talk plenty about that with Shaquille O'Neal, who will join us, and Kenny to get their thoughts on the early All-Star selections. But nevertheless, it's a pretty big game, and I put a pretty big regular season of game. Kawhi going home to play the Spurs. Your thoughts? As much as we're talking about Kawhi, let's not forget about DeMar. Playing against your former team is a special moment, home or away. Um, for Kawhi, it's funny because when I got traded from, uh, from Sacramento and the first time I went back, at halftime I was running in, I was excited, and I, I started going back into the locker room the other way. It's just the habits that you form over three, four years, two or three years, and you form these habits of game preparation. So I know for Kawhi, like being in a hotel in San Antonio, coming to the team bus and driving up, that is a, an awkward feeling. Mm. Um, no matter how you slice it, you start to think about your, your normal routine, as many years as he had been there, is being disrupted, being in that city. So that's, a, that's an interesting feeling. And for DeMar, seeing his former teammates, you know, on the other end of the court, laying up, and, and, and both teams, both guys, are, uh, they want to stick it to them in certain senses. This is, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how, they say, oh, it's just another game. This is one of 82. No. I'm going to let you know that where I am is better than where you are. The grass is greener under my feet. That's where the grass is greener. Well, it's as green as that suit right there. No Looking doubt. good, by the way. So, <laughs> so uh, Toronto Raptors play-by-play -play ace Matt Devlin joins game time. Hey, Matty D. So, so Wait. the Raptors... As I turn to camera three, they're off to the best start in franchise history, matching last year's record out the gate. Kawhi putting up 30 points per game, shooting 51% over his last 14. Now, do you personally get the feeling that Kawhi has had this date circled on the calendar? How could he not have it circled, right? It, as Kenny just spoke to, you're coming back, a place where you've had a tremendous amount of success. He talked about it earlier today. When you look back about the memories, the memories are from the postseason and the success that they had, winning a finals MVP in 2014. 
So I think, of course, he did have it circled. And he's playing right now the best basketball that he has played up until this point of this season, coming off of a career-high 45. You can see his game just continues to get better after playing only nine games last season for San Antonio. But he's had special moments here. And so you come back here, you look around, you see all the same faces. I would imagine he had this circled early on. So as a player, it seems like this fit has been a glove-like one. Personally, has he exceeded your expectations and all of Toronto so far, seeing the level at which he's played? Well, you know, number one, when you think about Kawhi Leonard, I think everybody understands he's a top five player in the league, arguably the best two-way player in the NBA. So exceeding expectations, I think it has more to do with just getting Oof. yourself 100% you know, coming back from an injury-plagued season as it was a season ago for him. But he has been as advertised, right? And if you're the Toronto Raptors, how do you get a player that is a franchise-caliber player that's a top-five player? Well, he was injured last year. He didn't want to stay here in San Antonio. And then you're willing to give up a great player, a four-time All-Star, in DeMar DeRozan. So he is who I think everybody expected him to be. He is a franchise player, and Kawhi Leonard showed that in the last game when he had a career-high 45 that the Raptors needed his 45 to beat the Utah Jazz. You know what? Uh, we've, we've heard a lot about the conversation that Pop has had about him not being a leader, and, then re and, and, and he responding saying, hey, they forget when you're not on the floor. Have we heard anything about his reception to Pop at the start of the game? Have we talked about that? Has anyone said he mentioned what he might do prior to the game? Is he going to go and make a special hello? Yeah. Or is he going to just go like business as usual? You know, it's a great question, Kenny. Nobody has really uh, asked that specifically. They are scheduled, obviously, to do a video tribute to not only Kawhi, but also Danny Green, who was an integral part of what the San Antonio Spurs were able to accomplish here. Uh, it is going to be interesting to watch that. I don't know that Kawhi knows at this time what ultimately his emotions are going to bring him to do prior to the start of the game. It is, I think, what everybody, Kenny, is waiting for, right? What is going to be the reception here? Uh, Greg Popovich, as we know, has come out and said that, you know, he would hope that they would appreciate all the years that he put in here. But we also understand that there's still some open wounds here because he did something that no other great San Antonio player did. He made the decision that he did not want to be here. And that is nothing that has been done before when you think about all these great San Antonio Spurs team, the dynasty that is San Antonio, starting with David Robinson and through Tim Duncan and all the other players that we could name. So uh, it's going to be very intriguing to watch this play out tonight. Of course, DeMar DeRozan made that decision to stay, and one of the people who was most upset about that was Kyle Lowry. Now, we've seen he's struggled with injuries, missed eight of the last nine. The Raptors have managed to stay above 500 without him in the lineup. What's his injury situation? What's the update? Well, right now, he participated in shoot-around. He was out on the court earlier. He is questionable for this evening. I'm sure we're going to get a late word as to whether or not he will go. But I think deep down inside, he really wants to play tonight. Now, whether or not he will, we'll have to wait and see. He did just get a couple of injections in his lower back this past Friday at the Hospital of Special Surgery in New York City. So he is trying to get back. He was going hard while he was out here. And hopefully, Hopefully for the Toronto Raptors, he is a go. And I'm sure the first time that he sees his former teammate in DeMar DeRozan, he's going to, from a competitor, and if you know Kyle Lowry, he's a competitor, he's going to want to be out there on the floor going up against DeMar. Can't wait to see what happens tonight. Thank you for joining us, Matty. We'll talk to you soon. You got it. I'm all about that green suit, too. <laughs> the jet, man, that looks good, man. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> Of course, nothing like that green. Green is for the money, baby. No doubt. No Always doubt. money is Kenny the Cash rules everything around me. Green, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. That's what we do right here <laughs> on Game Time. So the first early fan vote is in for the 68 All-Star Weekend in Charlotte. Now, <laughs> some early candy turn. thrown at me from Shaquille O'Neal has to be course, somewhere in there. Shaq will be joining somewhere us. Somewhere in there in the house. Nothing like live television. There's <laughs> <laughs> only listen, one man. Some of the early returns raised eyebrows, and although... 
there's some surprise. I'm not even going to read my script. We're going to talk about the early all-star no returns. We've seen the votes as we look at the screen. We see LeBron James over a million. But you see Luka Dantich is, is, is been playing remarkable basketball, yeah. leader, leader of the Rookie of the Year candidate. Fan vote doesn't make you the best player, but it, it does make you the most appreciated. Out, out I think all, his appreciation. Out of all those players there, though. What? What? Out of all those players there, what? We know it's early. Players that you might not expect to be there, who do you think is definitely going to stick? I'm looking at Luka. I'm looking well, at uh, I think I think, you know, the, the great thing about this is, again, the, the ups and downs of Turby of the Western Conference. You know, in five games, you could be a four seed or two seed. And, or you could be out of the playoffs. So this is this is a reflection of that. Obviously, Luka Donitz has kind of taken the world by storm because of his his uh, excitement. He's brought to Dallas, you know, a team that wasn't expected to do this well this early. Um, and for me, Stephen Adams is another guy who who's been in, who's jumped into this conversation about being an All Star, which is well deserved. You know what he's doing in Oklahoma City and what they are doing. So I'm, I'm excited to see some new faces in there. Two guys that we didn't expect. Obviously, James Harden should be jumped way up, but this might have been done two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Yeah. You know, some of these votes were done when they Rockets were nowhere near the playoff contention. So, like I said, in, in a week, it was all good just a week ago. That's what Jay-Z said. No, the, Kenny said that. Well, Kenny said that too as well. Jay-Z repeated it. Queensbridge in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the West Guards, Derrick Rose, we saw he was an all-star back in the day, the youngest MVP ever. Now he's sitting with all these votes as the second guard. Right now, he would be a starter. I love it. Can, can No, nah, he won't hold on. You don't think James so? Hard, James Harden is going to slide in, but Derrick Rose is playing all-star basketball. But I, I just love the fact that the fans have, have appreciated and appreciating what Derrick Rose has done. I've been a Derrick Rose fan from day one. For me, I'm excited to see that. Um, I'm hoping that he part uh, partakes in the All-Star Weekend in some capacity. I'm just happy to see a guy who people are counted out and says, no, I count on myself. And, and, and that, it's just great to see Derek play well. Great to see him playing well. Gave us that 50-point gym earlier this year. Playing great. You know who used to play great. He is an MVP. He is a Hall of Famer. The big fellas in the building. Go ahead, dance on them one time. Dance on them one time. Represent for them cues. Okay. It's all about 1911 in here. Shouts out to the noops as well. Diesel Dunks is coming up. Game time. Check smile for him one time now. There you go.